that's a good start for the day. But uh, looks like the sun's going to come up. It was supposed to be really foggy, but it looks like the sun's going to come up good. And no bridge is still in good shape. Yay! It took a long time to build that bridge. The, uh, the original bridge was just the first two logs here. Then I added this bigger one on the side here. The, uh, yeah. I just put a bit of cordage around the middle of these uh, ones here. This is a little springy in the middle. Just put in a bit of cord around that really makes a difference. That's held up pretty good. That's uh, two, nearly three winters that's been there now. My biggest problem I think is that great big tree on the other side because see the way the water's undercutting underneath that tree? What it tends to do is it washes out all the soil underneath there. And, uh, what we need is about 20 or 30 decent sized rocks just to throw in underneath that tree but unfortunately I don't have 20 or 30 decent sized rocks. Yeah. Bit of water's just undercutting straight underneath that bank. It would eventually topple this tree, unfortunately. Yeah. Right, but in the meantime, my bridge is good. Right. <laughs> right, I need to continue. I've got to continue on that way. Right, that'll do for the moment. I'm going to do a little update to a piece I did in, a, in my last videos there about crossing slopes with uh, terminal slopes. This here is pretty much you can see all the rocks are tumbled downhill. The rocks to tumble downhill like that, it's about 42 to 45 degrees. Now, when you're crossing an area like that, it doesn't look like much, but always be advised that any one of these rocks, you know, they weigh 20, 30 pounds or whatever, one of those falls, rolls into your ankle, makes for a very bad day. So any time that you cross an area like this, always be aware that uh, stuff can move. So lots of hands and feet. And my golden rule is, and the same with anything, when you're climbing, walking, whatever, three points of contact. So two feet, one hand, two hands, one foot, whatever. Always have three points of contact when you're crossing something. Yeah, right. This is actually fairly easy to get across here. And uh, there is a bigger area like this coming up, but uh, this one's actually not too bad. Right, on I go. Now the next area I have to cross, a little bit more exposed. Uh, a lot more loose rock across this section so I'm not going to do any filming until I get to the other side because I've got to go all the way across those trees over there as you can see there's plenty of opportunities here for rocks to fall off of stuff and what have you never a good plan so straight across I'm heading over that way and uh, it looks cold yeah actually it looks pretty bloody cold yeah right so I'm going to put the camera away until I get across this lot Right, that's that been done? <laughs> that's always interesting. A lot of wobbly rocks across there. Uh, coming across that piece, lots of hands and feet. You look at all these rocks and you think, yeah. I just picked up one of those small rocks and it probably weighed 20, 30 pounds. And those big rocks are many tons. So, And they roll downhill just the same as anything else. So, right, now I need to continue that way. Uh, this is a place that I call somewhere When people say where are you going? Oh, I'm going somewhere. Yeah, this is one of the places that's called somewhere <laughs> As you can see there's some pretty decent sized rocks have fallen off that hill and they're still in the process of rolling down that hill For This little pool here. I can tell you now. There's a nice little rock there in the middle This on a very hot day because it's slow running water through here This is actually a very nice spot just to sit and stick your feet in the river and cool right now it is actually fairly difficult to cross here uh, the other side of there in that forest over there is some really nice territory but unfortunately this corner is because uh, it's a sharp corner you really want to avoid crossing rivers on sharp corners because what you find is on the far bank or the outside of the curve you find that that's usually very deep water and flowing fast so uh, wide and shallow I know that around that corner about I don't know 0.2 to 0.5 of a kilometer down that way it's much shallower and very easy actually on a reasonable day to walk straight across so if you're crossing a river you want a wide flat piece shallow water 
rather than uh, on a bend because this is a considerable bend as you can see all these slopes around here are in the process of collapsing yeah so that uh, you don't want to be crossing see all the big rocks over there where the white water is don't want to be crossing there yeah if you want to know the best places to cross a river just stop and sit a while if you see any deer wherever they cross that's where you cross because they're pretty smart <laughs> they live here right i am going to go and get set up in here and i'm going to make myself some breakfast right so i've uh, arrived out at a little place i like to be it's uh like i say this is called somewhere the uh, the campsite is not mine i did not build this campsite um it is a very nice little campsite it's tucked away pretty good you, you, it's hard to trip over this one but it, uh, it's further off the trail than you might think but it's also easy to walk right past and not even notice so today's video i am going to be making some breakfast and on the menu today we have oatmeal yeah as always buy a bucket full of water and i'm only i'm only i'm not using the big fireplace i'm just going to use my little stove i trust in the stove love this thing anybody that doesn't have one of these stoves you should really get one Today I'm going to be using my Ohuhu stove again and uh, you probably notice I haven't taken my kit belt off because early in the morning here this is a prime location the bears come out of that forest over there cut across here and then head down that valley over that way a lot of wildlife through here in the morning so that's why I still have a bear spray in there very handy now today I'm going to do it I didn't bring any pellets today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect up a few dead twigs I'm going to show you the best way to run these things on twigs and then how to make some breakfast. You need twigs that are about, let's measure this up in here. Yeah, about as long as your finger, because they've got to reach from the bottom of this and you want to stand them upright like this. You don't want them laying down, you want them standing upright. And I'll show you why and the best way to do that in a moment. In a moment, for now, I will uh, go and collect some plywood. And I'll show you the best way to do that. Right, now this, this is the reality of running these things on sticks as opposed to running them on uh, pellets. What I find is, um, to get them going on sticks, now in the bottom of here I have stood all the sticks upright. I put a cotton ball in the top there and I put a few twigs higgledy piggledy on the top because fire likes chaos. To get enough heat in there for the vertical sticks to burn uh, I need to get a little bit of heat going in there first so I actually find this is the best way I know you're not supposed to build a fire above the little holes inside but when you're running them on sticks and obviously this fire burns from the top downwards when you're running them on sticks this is actually the best way to start them uh, in most of the videos you'll see of people using these on sticks you'll see them trying to light it then uh, they'll cut away for a bit and then come back and hey presto after 20 minutes of huffing and puffing and blowing and what have you they will get this going but this is actually the best way to do it so all the sticks in the bottom there you see the the round sticks they're all stood upright and then what i do is cotton ball a few higgledy piggledy sticks on the top because fire likes chaos and then uh, just let that get going the way it is easier eh? <laughs> best way to do it but it, obviously fire needs heat and unfortunately it has done nothing but rain like crazy last night we had torrential rains through here so even trying to find the dry twigs is a, a little bit of a challenge so I'm going to set this up here and it would seem that that seems to be where the uh, campfire smoke seems to be running to come as well so we will uh, might have to move this around and so it's not too bad yeah it's always the way it just doesn't matter where you set up or what you do you can guarantee the smoke's in your way right as always this is one of those cheap fire steels that i was referring to i can't remember who makes it it does actually chuck 
very good spot. It's, it's brilliant. It was cheap. It was like six bucks. Um, it actually works very, very well. And the striker on this thing, although it's just a cheap piece of bent metal, it uh, actually throws much better sparks than some of the more expensive ones. As always, when you're finished, gear away. I love Ziploc bags because they're just great for waterproofing it. I have taken my kit belt off and I've put a bright hat on. Like I say, this is a bit of a wildlife corridor in the morning, so it's uh, better to be visible. Most bears, stuff like that, they come through here, as soon as they know I'm here, gone. As soon as they smell smoke, they'll be out of here anyway. But, uh, as say, soon, uh, whenever you take gear out of a pack or whatever, put it back where you know where it is, so you're, you're not hunting around trying to find everything later in the day. So uh, I will see if I can get a reasonable little fire going here. As like I say, trying to find anything like a dry twig at the moment in here. This whole place is soaked, absolutely soaked. Yeah. Looks like we've got some heat going. What I do, once I've got a bit of heat going in there, I can uh, just keep poking the bits around so that they're clear on the side. Once this top ring is completely clear, I can put the pot stand on it, and then I can do the most important thing, make some breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, get some good heat in there now. That's the only thing we're running these on sticks. I have to admit, I prefer to run them on pellets, because I have absolutely loads of pellets. Another good thing, if you're burning sticks, just crack them, split them, like that, just lay them in there, like that. It gives it an edge, stops it rolling around so much. There's so many little tweaks in here. A lot of these are um, these pine twigs. If you look at these, see how flexible that is? That's, that's no good for light and fire. It will burn, but no good. What you're looking for is wood like this. It's got white and grey. This wood is soaked, it's actually wet. <laughs> but it's, you're looking for this nice grey wood, and when you, uh, it should snap. But if you get those nice edges, you'll find that will give you a much better fire. It's like splitting baby wood. Just split it like this. Stepper in there. Nice edges. Catches fire really good. I think I'll save that little piece of twig. That's, that's reasonably good. Right, I'm just going to let that get going. Once that's got going, and I've got enough heat in there, and uh, I can uh, get some water on, make myself some oatmeal. Yes. I didn't bring tea today. I was going to bring a flask, but these rocks and that across here where you have to come in, uh, I try to carry as little weight as I can across there because those rocks, they all just move around. You've got to be really careful on them. Looks like I've got a good uh, good fire going now, so that should be good. I'll get back in a moment. Well, as you can see, it's flaring up a little bit. That's because uh, there are a lot of twigs in there. I'm over the top of the hovels, actually, which is you're not really supposed to be. And for breakfast today, we have oatmeal surprise. Two packets of oatmeal, we'll wait. Now, the surprise is... I haven't got my glasses on, so I don't know what flavour it is. So I'm just going to mix them up once I've got some warm water and uh, make some breakfast. Yeah. Good thing with oatmeal is you only need a very small amount of water in the bottom to actually get it up and going. A spoon, don't have to have. That pot has been on there with about that much water in the bottom for a couple of minutes. In it, a couple of minutes, and we already have lots and lots and lots of bubbles. So I just need to heat this water up a bit more. As you can see, that's that's pretty hot already. Yeah, we're, uh, 
might get a point where I can drop a couple of little twigs in there. So what you want is these nice dry, dry ones like these. They, they snap easy. And these are unfortunately about the driest pieces of wood I can find around here. Now, running them on pellets, you can just set it and forget it, basically. If you're running them on sticks, you've got to keep putting sticks through there, because I can tell you now, these little stoves on the sticks, they, they generate so much heat in there, yeah, they will actually burn through pretty quick. So, get my uh, water going. I might need a little bit extra water in there, not sure. Right. Oatmeal surprise it is. Right. <laughs> it's bubbling a little. <laughs> I like two packets. Two packets actually makes a lot of breakfast. So, as always, take all your garbage with it. I did see over here. Piece of tin foil. Somebody dropped some tin foil. Tin foil will never disappear in the environment. So never leave it there. Right. Go stir up. So much more water we need. A splash. A very precise measurement of this is splash with water. That's probably enough. Running them on twigs, you'll find yourself doing this quite often. <laughs> Not too long either. <laughs> that one's not going to break. Not too easy. That is the only thing with twigs. Like I say, pellets, set it, forget it, where you go. That is looking really good already. Campfire breakfast. Ooh, that's hot. It smells good. I'm guessing one of those packets was apple cinnamon because that smells like apple cinnamon. Mm. Yep. I would go with that. That's definitely apple cinnamon tummy. <laughs> mm. I'm telling you now, good breakfast. Instant chair. Perfect. Doesn't get much better than that. Eh? <laughs> On sticks, it gets through sticks really fast. Mm. Shame you can't smell that. Because that is actually really good. Sun is just breaking the hill. That uh, I can't remember the name of that mountain now. It escapes me. Anyway, the uh, it's just breaking over the top of that hill. So we're going to go from very damp and cold to very warm here soon. I think we're up to 28 today, which is why I've come out early. 
because it's, uh, it's nice to get down in here early. Yeah, everything's still wet. Not heavy, but that doesn't matter. Soon dries up. You can see the wood gas coming up through the little holes in the side. Absolutely perfect. And so these are hoo-hoo stoves. Weird name. But, and they work good. I tell you, they work really, really good. I don't know what that other flavour was. Bits of good mix. I buy those um, variety packs of the, uh, of the quick oats or whatever they call them. The quick oats. Uh, there's about four or five different flavours in there. I just mix them up. It's all the same. On a scale of one to ten, it was a good way to make breakfast. It's a good way. Because the sticks in there burn through pretty quick, I can just leave that in there, let it burn down, job done. Yeah, it will do. Take that off, let that cool down. Oh, that's, that's very red in there. Got a good charcoal in there. And they're very good for making like, quick meals and stuff like that. It, uh, the heat you've got to be careful of, obviously, but it's, you know, you can run them on twigs. You're not using up vast amounts of firewood. Chuck a couple of twigs in there, keep it going, job done. That is the best way to do it. So that's it, breakfast done. Uh, pots all washed up. Always make sure you wash up pots and stuff like that because they've got food in them. You don't want to be carrying around garbage and food in your backpack all day. Always a good idea to make sure it's nice and clean. It'll take you to walk over to the river here. Sun's coming up nicely. You can feel that heat, it's nice. As you can see, it's a very nice spot to come to. It's a little bit tricky to get in and out of here. Um, you've got to be a little bit careful. But as you can see, what an amazing spot, eh? Not sure I'd want to fancy trying to get up that slope on the other side. <laughs> and that's what I mean by a dangerous slope. You start crawling up that slope, all that loose material on there. You see where those big boulders in amongst the loose stuff? But, uh, you get one of those come down that hill towards you, you're in big trouble. Like, really big trouble. That thing hits you, game over. The sun is starting to come up. It's a little wet in the forest. This forest is all moss, like this. It's a little wet in here, but that's fine. I like it like that, it's good. Yeah. get a mossy forest like this I can walk through this forest and not make a single solitary sound not one yeah it's just like walking on sponge this is like walking on I kid you not like six to eight inches of sponge yeah. I'm just having a look over at the creek over there just gonna head over this side a bit just want to see if there's any wildlife in the valley because I have to travel up this valley in a minute once I've got everything cooled down and packed up and put away. So 
make sure there's nothing left around here. Like I say, this is a bit of a crossing point for wildlife. So it's always a good idea to let them know you're here. And as a general rule, you can go out of here up there. Uh, again, a lot of very loose rock. The quickest way for me to get out of here, believe it or not, is straight up there. I have come down that way before now and uh, yeah there's a lot of loose material in there not wise especially on your own there's a great big rock sitting right in that corner that's probably a five ten ton rock that stuff starts moving bad day bad day for everybody a lot of driftwood and that is still down in here a lot of this all up there on the side where i'm stood now in the uh, 2013 floods i would have been underwater yeah, it's all these branches and that down through, it all just gets washed down. But, that's what rivers do. All this debris and that you can see on the side here, all these logs, this was all washed in from the floods, so... Would not want to have been stood here then. <laughs> yeah. Now my way out of here, it, uh, to make it into a really nice walk, that uh, mud cliff that you can see over there, um, I have to get up to the top of there and go along there and then down through the forest on the other side so that'll be interesting at least the sun's up now i had some breakfast got some energy time to get all this stuff put away cleaned up make sure everything is put out although that's only a little stove as i say every time i light a fire and in all my videos once you light a fire no matter how big how small you are responsible for it it is your fire your responsibility until it is absolutely stone cold it is yours now i do have my fire bucket i love this fire bucket everybody should have one of these it's just a little fold up bucket full it holds 20 liters uh, reality is you can get about 10 to 15 in it as you can see that's all just uh, bit of heat in there and uh, we'll get rid of all that charcoal the advantage with sticks is it burns through so fast that literally I mean you can use that there's a little hand warming fire yeah it's not bad yeah it shuts off a little bit of heat it uh, I do have completely the wrong trousers on today I should have had my waterproof ones on and as you can see my boots are soaked but not much point in trying to dry my boots out on that fire so <laughs> oh well doesn't matter this is why I always wear wool socks always uh, pure wool socks merino wool it because uh, it doesn't matter whether they're wet dry whatever it uh, they keep your feet warm and you don't get blisters you do not get those nasty bloody blisters i remember back in the day wearing those stupid nylon socks that we used to get hate them i have not bought nylon socks since i know uh, merino wool socks where i live they're about 26 bucks a pair i don't know what they are in other parts of the world i don't know but i can tell you now they are worth every single penny yeah blaze in sunshine 30 degrees or minus 30 degrees doesn't matter they work absolutely brilliant yeah all right I'm just gonna set this back up over here for a second enjoy that sunshine look at that sunshine isn't that nice Let's just clip that back on there like I say the other day I said everything has a, a lanyard on it well even even my camera has a lanyard on it so when I have this camera attached to me I can just hook this onto my gear so that uh, should I drop it it can only fall about two feet clips on everything I got lanyards and wrist straps on everything absolutely everything <laughs> look at my uh, no circle seal I have this on here so if I drop that I got it it ain't going nowhere if you drop it and it falls somewhere and it's you know you're gonna look and think yeah I can get that it's not worth risking falling off somewhere keep it on your wrist job done it's uh, definitely the best way to go this blade is still ridiculously sharp as I said before I've, I've only ever one bloke broke one blade and that actually wasn't far from here that was about a kilometer a kilometer and a half that way and it uh, yeah works an absolute treat for trail clearing and um, just to have in your backpack and that this saw is absolutely brilliant. Down 
nice and clean. That's how you want it. I have to scrub this up when I get home because you always get to sit on there. You just get a scotch bright. Done. Take you five minutes. speed up the combustion process quite considerably. <laughs> tip those ashes out into here but if you look whoever built this fly pit this is absolutely full of half burnt material like if I was to break that up put that in there that'll still burn yeah so people look at it and they think oh it's in a fly pit it's fine it will uh, just go out on its own it doesn't but it's chucking off a lot of heat my plan is just to leave it in the steel container till it's uh, cooled down there a touch, burn through some of that stuff, hey presto, you ain't got to worry about it. It's supposed to rain again tonight, pretty bad, so, it, uh, but I'm about to chuck probably 10 litres of water on that, so I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. Here's how I do need to do, I'll tie this lace. Wet shoelaces, always fun, eh? Yeah. Should. So I've got to go up through a forest in a minute. And I'm going to tuck the bottom of my trousers in, even though they're wet. If you look after your gear, your gear will look after you. But uh, I see people using and abusing all kinds of gear and stuff. I hate to see that. A lot of this stuff, a lot of it costs quite a lot of money. But uh, you don't want to replace it every five minutes. We got uh, pretty much nothing but ash in there, so I need a small stick. Turns it into wood ash real fine, really quick. That chamber is almost empty now. Yeah. Yeah. By the Ohuhu stove, it comes in this nice little uh, couch, which is good, but I found that everything fits inside that one pot, the one litre pot, all the stove, everything, all my bits and pieces that I usually have in there, all fit in there really nice. And the, uh, my, the pots and pans came in a nice little waterproof container, so it's double lined. This actually has, this is a mesh. This is actually a mesh. It's got a coarse mesh on the outside, fine mesh on the inside. I have actually used this for filtering water. If you've got an area that the water's a little bit, you know, it's got a lot of debris and crap in it, this actually makes a, a really good little primary filter. Okay, it's, yeah, it's not very small holes. However, outside is thicker, inside is much finer. So it, it does actually make a pretty good little primary filter. It's actually not bad, yeah. And it has a blow just kind of hang it up, pour your water through it, it gets all your sticks and debris out of it. Then you can uh, just run it through a sand filter on the, the riverbeds here, all sand and fine gravel. 
you can very quickly make up a, um, a filter. If you've got an old pop bottle, here's a very simple trick. If you've got an old pop bottle, just cut the bottom off the pop bottle, fill it up with sand material, just straight out the river, doesn't matter. Filter your water straight through it. That will get rid of 90% of um, like the particulate matter that's in there. And hey presto, now all we've got to do is boil it. Anytime you have water straight out of a river, always bear in mind that there's beavers and cows and sheep and goats and Christ knows what upstream deer, you know, all crapping in the river. So you don't want to be drinking that. So boil the hell out of the water and you need a good rolling boil and it needs to be not just, oh, I saw some bubbles, that's good. No, just boil it, boil it, boil it, boil it, boil it, boil it. Just leave it rolling, good rolling boil, four, five, ten minutes, whatever you want. Make sure it's a really rolling boil, like it's just going like crazy. Let it cool, and that water's good, yeah. But it, it does actually make quite a good little primary filter, so double use. I like to have a double use for everything, yeah. Like this waterproof makes a good chair. This log is soaked, so it makes a good chair. Probably a small handful of red embers in there. But, uh, very shortly, I'm going to tip that out and soak it down. Yeah. And that's how you want to leave a fire. Liquid soup. <laughs> I've literally just poured about 10 15 litres of water through half a handful of um, material. So, always a good way to do it. All right. Time to head out, sun is up, breakfast is done, sun is up, I'm on my way. That's how our campsite should be left, absolutely stone cold, soaked down, no garbage, there's actually less garbage here now, I did find a couple of small bits of garbage which I'm taking with me, and uh, now I have to head out, unfortunately, to head out of here, I'll show you what I go go up. <laughs> this is why it's uh, not necessarily the best spot for the fainter heart. I have to go up there now. <laughs> right, this I happen to know is a much more stable slope. There's a pathway up through there that I can see is reasonably green. And it's, uh, that's what you're looking for. The loose shale and stuff like that, you don't want. Uh, you want the stuff that's uh, reasonably green because uh, there's a good chance that it's been there a while. Right, I need to put this down because I'm going to need all hands and all feet to get up there. Right, if your comfort zone is not steep slopes and loose rock, this is not a place for you to come. <laughs> I've just come up there, which is literally hands and feet all the way up. Two feet, two hands. That'd be steep. Yeah. Why well, I stopped for rest, there's a nice big rock I'm stood on. This is quite a nice rock. I don't go nowhere. I still have a fair way to go to get up to the top. But if that is not nice for you, and if that doesn't make it all worthwhile, I don't know what does. It, uh, that is a tricky spot to get into. It's even harder spot to get out of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, coming up that is not fun. Alright. Beats a hell If the river's down, like if there's not much water flowing through here, you can actually walk down along a good part of this river. But at the moment it's got a fair amount of water in it. As you can see it's flowing pretty good. This time of the year, you have a beautiful day like this. I'm just deciding on which way round to go. Because uh by the time I get around the other side, it might have dried out, but there's a big grassy meadow. And I don't know about you and me, I don't mind walking through forests, but walking through a soaking wet meadow with literally knee-high grass, nah, that's kind of 
kind of yuck. Right, so I will head on out of here. Okay, that's where I was just now, down in the bottom there. But uh, okay. not for the faint of heart getting in that over here. It's a good spot, but always be careful. Right, I'm up the top. That was a bit of a scramble. <laughs> yeah, not my favourite. I'd rather be walking through forest. I don't care how far I walk through forest. Most forest stuff doesn't move. But that is a tidy cliff. Right down the bottom there was where I was collecting water this morning. See what I mean about crossing the river? When you get the curves in the river, you get the deeper water. I'm going to get up on right up on top of this cliff. See if I can get up there. Still pretty steep. And get up the top of here. That's a nice view down through there, eh? That's nice. Yeah, very nice. Alright. Now this is all pretty loose mud cliff along this side, so a bit of caution is required. I certainly wouldn't want to be trying to come up that. <laughs> when I just come up, we're steep enough. That is just dangerously steep. <laughs> yes. But if that doesn't make it worthwhile, I don't know what does. That is a very nice view, eh? Now I have a dilemma now. Because I can go back the way I came, and it will take me about an hour. Or. I can head upstream and then over the top of this mountain and down the other side which is going to take me most of the day however we do tend to get violent thunderstorms in the afternoon one of my videos I was camping not too far from here like I say about a kilometre from here and that's uh, where I nearly got struck by lightning twice <laughs> there's a mighty crack and a bang and a flash all at the same time and I just said to myself Oh dear, that was fairly close. Or words very similar for a camera. And uh, happened straight again. Bang! Did it again. But it was the middle of the night. It was pitch black. I didn't really have much choice about whether to stay or not. Because uh, there's a lot of very rough terrain to cross to get out of here. And I really didn't want to be doing that. So I thought, oh well, I'm just going to have to stay here now. But you could actually hear the air crackling and sizzling, so that was kind of interesting. Closest I've ever been struck, uh, close to getting struck by lightning, so that's as close as I ever want to get things. Not sure what these flowers are, there's lots of these. These yellow things. Not sure what those are. They're very nice, they're everywhere. Yeah. This is a bit of a steep drop off here, so this is as close as I can get. There is a very nice view just down and around that corner, but it's too dangerous to just lean out there and get that view. The mountain's over that way. Very nice camping grounds down through there. This is all public land use zone. Basically from where I am, you can go that way for, I don't know, days and days and days and days and days. You can walk down through there and you can camp anywhere you like down in there. And it's uh, absolutely fantastic. But a lot of it's hard to get to where I am now to get down into that area there is either about a 15 kilometer walk round or put on the water shoes roll the trousers up and head across the river but if you look you can see the different colors of the water down there there's, a, there's like the grayish browny color water where the sandbars are that's where you want to be crossing you don't want to be crossing in that deep blue deep blue is not good <laughs> although that water is not horrendously deep You'd be surprised how quickly when we get a thunderstorm. Like if you were the other side of that river and we had a major thunderstorm come through, you want to get across that river as fast as you can. You do not want to be waiting around because it feeds in from a huge catchment area. And you'd be surprised how quickly that river can rise to a three feet. Right, so I'm going to head up through here. I don't think I'm going to do the walk up over the mountain on the way back. I think I'll just do the easy route. Yeah. <laughs> just see if there's any trees down up in here. I think I can clear a bunch out of here. Not too long ago. I have my saw with me, so let's just have a look. Oh, it looks like it's pretty good. Let me just head around the other side. 
there was a short path on the other side. I don't come up through this way too often. This is not actually a proper recognised trail. So uh, I just tend to clear off the small bit. I've cleared all these up through here in the past. Like this one. <laughs> Usually there's a spot. I always find you find trees down in the same spot. But this is a fairly short walk through here. Let me just see if there's any down. If that doesn't make for a good view, I don't know what does. <laughs> On the far side of the valley there, I don't know how well it will show up. There's a large green open area up in there. But the top of that area is a really good camping site. Really good. However, it's a bit of a bugger to get to. I've stood here before now and watched the deer down in the bottom there. Can't see any today. There's a large um, like gravel island in the middle. They seem to be like being out on there. Getting out onto the gravel island is easy. You can just walk straight across that water. It's probably only four or five inches deep. However, from there to the other side, not so good. Right. I'm just going to head up around this corner because I had to clear a few out of here the other week or the other year. Let's have a look. If I knew it was going to be sunny all day, I would take the scenic route round. Uh, this corner here had a whole bunch of trees on it last time I was here. I have to cut this one out. Yeah, that green area over the far side there, really nice. It's steeper than it looks. That is actually a steep valley, really steep. But yeah, it looks like we're good here. I cleared all these out there the other year. There was two or three across here. Oh, that's good. That's all stay good. Right, that's as far as I'm going, because uh, if I go too much further down this way, I will talk myself into going down and round and over the top of the mountain. And I know I will end up finishing that trip in the thunderstorm with a poncho on. Yeah, I cut this one out the other year. Right. Oh well, looks good up in here. So uh, I will head back the easy way. Because there's another trail I want to look at. One last look down the valley. Very nice, eh? Beautiful day. Considering it was supposed to be foggy, cloudy and horrible today, I don't actually think they've come out too well. I'm too bad there. Yeah. Look how much so that, that island in the middle there, that gravel island that you can see, uh, before the floods that was forest and the river used to go straight on. But if you look now, it kind of comes in from the left of the picture there, you can see where the white water is. That river never used to flow there, <laughs> it used to be over the other side. But it, uh, yeah. Amazing, you get one decent flood, cuts new channels, and rivers move sideways, backwards and forwards. Yeah. If I go down, if I follow this trail down through here, it'll actually take me down through this forest and onto that flat ground that you can see at the bottom of the valley there. It'll bring me out there, and then you can just swing up around the corner about two or three kilometers, turn right up over the top of the mountain, down the other side in a very, very steep meadow, and then uh, you can come back down one of the oldest trails in this area. That trail, the far side of this hill, was uh, one of the original trails before there was anything up through here. That's how the old trappers and that used to come up through. Very old trail. But that's the one I'm just about to go and have a look at the bottom end of it to make sure that's all cleared out. But, yes, I have sat here. As you can see, this is a really good spot. I have sat here before for many hours just watching the deer and stuff cross the river. A lot of wild horses down through here too, but uh, you've got to watch out for them. If you start them, they can get a bit, uh, bit, bit not happy. Let's just put it that way. But uh, there are a lot of wild horses down through here. Right, I'm going to continue on my way, which is through the forest that way. If this is not a nice day, I don't know what is. There it is. This is the day to be walking through the forest, isn't it? Now I have a choice. I can go back across that rock or I can take another 
<laughs> Dave route straight up over up that hill over there ideally I'd like to be at the top of there now how did I get over there I came down there one time let me see if I can find it there was a deer trail that basically came down that cliff and it was actually pretty good yeah I've got to get up top of there but I ain't going up the front face of there I did actually find somewhere over in here not sure where it's a bit wet in there Blech. now somewhere through this lock I did once find a trail that got me to the top of there yep. let's have a look see what I can see somewhere through here I don't fancy scrambling up that rock pile <laughs> but it was a rough trail down through here somewhere see if I can find it I know where it goes <laughs> it goes up there which is where I want to be but if I remember rightly it was insanely steep that's not it yes there's a rather large five ton boulder sitting at the top of that slope so I ain't going up there no that doesn't look like for me now that piece of trail I found was up in the back of here somewhere Ooh. Found myself a stone shelter. Wonder who built that. <laughs> now this is exactly where you wouldn't want to be camping, because sitting at the top of that hill, there's a boulder, and I bet you that weighs a good five ton. Just sitting there waiting to roll down that hill, it would take very little for that to come down that hill. So dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. All right. I know this is about to get very steep up in here, so I might have to put this away until I can get up the top of the hill I can't remember where it was I don't want to, if I continue going this way I end up, I'm committed to going right up the mountain then and I don't really want to do that oh, deer trail see, deer trail now I know I came down a deer trail let me have a look see if this is it where's that bloody great rock over there Okay, I'm going to have a scout around and see if I can find a safer route up this hill. Right, well I got myself up on top of the ridge, came up through that way, it's very mossy, it's that six inches of moss, and here we are in a very thick piece of day forest again. As you can see, no sight lines in here, you can't see anything, so if you need to find your way out of here, what do you need? Compass. Right. So, as I was saying in my last video, the, uh, the important thing about having a compass, even if you don't have a map, is I know where I started from. Say I started direct north, to get back out of there I've got to come south, yeah? So, if I travel all day north, I've got to travel all day south to get back out. So, I know that from here I need to travel north-northwest, because where I had my campfire just now, I was facing directly north, and now to get out of here I've just come up that bank it's very easy as you come up that gully it's quite a steep gully it uh, goes down through there it's definitely a hands and feet job on soft moss so uh, however by doing this I have alleviated the majority of the boulder field which is why I've come this way and it's also an extremely nice view I like it this is my kind of forest you can keep all that manicured trail stuff tourists and that like manicured trails people out for a walk with the kids and stuff yes stick to that stuff know your limits stay within it don't go crazy this up through here I'm basically following deer tracks because I know the deer are smart because they live here yeah now where I want to travel again there's my compass set that up I've got the, the arrow at the top there in the doghouse or whatever you want to call it 
the shed or whatever people call it anyway at the top north you'll notice is slightly off to one side that's for magnetic north deviation uh, we're about 12 and a half 13 degrees something like that um, off of north here at the moment and it does vary from year to year because that that number does change and it does move so don't hold that as hard and fast i've only traveled probably four or five kilometers today so uh, to turn around and head back i'm literally about north northwest roughly that way is where i need to go so uh, as long as i follow this ridge around it gives me an idea otherwise it's very easy to get turned around especially in a forest like this look at this yeah you're navigating through this the sun is behind me so we're only mid-morning o'clock at the moment so if i put the sun on my back at mid-morning o'clock halfway between there and off to my right should be where i need to travel so let's see if that's correct i've got the sun on my back my shadow's down there I've got the sun on my back get out my compass set my compass up north northwest that way exactly right it's exactly where i need to go yeah right so i'm going to plod on around through this forest and uh, head down the valley <sighs> only thing i would say with this kind of forest this is my favorite kind of forest because you just never see anybody anywhere in places like this other than crazy people like me is the spider webs <laughs> absolutely everywhere this time of the day literally spun all over the show so there is nowhere along here i don't think where i can get the view down over that way let me just cut back off my uh, sight line there for a second so this is how easy people get turned around in a forest they go oh, let me just go and have a look over there so they go another spider web so they go and just have a ooh, quick look over there and then they find themselves i now know i'm traveling about 90 degrees off where i should be yeah. <laughs> however just want to give you an idea of where i came up so remember that really dodgy boulder that i was looking at that's along this slope somewhere so uh, that's why i didn't come up that could have just as easy come up that slope however not so good up through the forest on this side there's a lot of rock this is all limestone it's uh it's not the most stable of uh, materials it does fall apart if you look at all this uh, material here look at that that's why there's that big scree slope right below that because uh, it likes to fall to pieces so oh, it's also steeper than it looks <laughs> so i'm not going to stand on the end of that that would just be tempting fate but i have to admit the deer know all the best spots eh? wet logs oh just done it again the logs haven't dried out yet so every time you step on a wet log with uh, rubber shoes never a good plan that's why you've always got to be careful near edges and stuff I mean, look at that down there i really don't want to be falling down that <coughs> that would make for a very bad day the chances of anybody finding you up here in any kind of reasonable time frame would be uh, pretty much nil look at the size of this rock here I'm just going to put my foot on it I'm not going to push it but give you an idea look at the size of that rock it is just sitting there and if you look at the bottom of that well, there's many many rocks just like it and just as big they got there somehow they fell off there is a place up here somewhere like a little gully I found it once before and it, uh, it had a very nice rock in it which would make a good chair actually there's not too bad but I'm trying to find somewhere a little bit out of the sun I'm going to sit down and have what can only be described as a very nice ah oh, hang on <laughs> here's my little gully this bit's really weird when you look at geological formations you think oh yeah you can see how that formed and this formed and all the rest of it the, to the right of this pile of rock is a bloody great cliff this side of it is a hole pretty odd look at that there's a big hole here it's a, and i know there's gophers and that they're living here there's a flat rock over the other side i'm going to go and sit there and have something to eat 
if I can get up over there without upsetting Mr. Gophers. More importantly, this is also prime cat country, which is why I'm making lots of noise, because this is somewhere that a cat would sit looking for prey. That boulder field that I crossed earlier, that's all that crap down the bottom of there. But uh, I thought, well, oh, it's a little harder to get up this way. However, makes for a much more uh, enjoyable walk. <laughs> Whichever way you go, you've still got to gain the elevation. Elevation isn't free, unfortunately. <laughs> it requires effort. <laughs> ah. These juniper bushes as well. Especially walking around rock like this. Be very careful because you can easily find holes. Right, let's find a flattish rock out of the sun. So this is prime cat country. Look at this. This is exactly where you'd find bloody cats. Yeah. I just had a look around. I can't see any tracks. I can't see any sign of them anywhere. So I think I'm good today. Look at that down there. Look at that. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> right. I'm going to find somewhere to sit. Have a very nice grapefruit. And uh, do some more in a bit. Oh, more juniper bushes. Mind the juniper bushes. More importantly, mind the cliff. Falling off a juniper bush is not too bad. Falling off a cliff, really bad. Right. This looks like my chair for the next half an hour. So this is where I'm going to have lunch. Well, as always with lunch o'clock, make sure you have somewhere to put all your garbage. Ever trust the uh, Ziploc bags for another yummy bar. I like those things. The only trouble is if there's any gophers around here or whatever. Squirrels, they like those things too. So. But keep an eye on them. That rock, that huge rock there is, uh, I don't know, that's many, many hundreds of tons. But fortunately it's facing the other way. So, should it fall, hopefully it'll go the other way and not take the hillside with it. It's being sat on the hillside, not a good plan. Anybody who uh, hasn't tried these grapefruits, oh my god, these are so good. I get them at a superstore. They're, uh, they're not bad, sometimes they're on sale, nine times out of ten they're not. But it, uh, let me tell you, there's a refreshing break. Doesn't get a bit, look at that. Oh my god, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Even the pips, make sure you take the pips and that with you. The wildlife here doesn't need grapefruit pips. That is a very good sunshine. I have sat here before. I sat on the rock on the other side, but that's a bit too sunny at the moment. I'm trying to keep out the sun. And this morning it started off, I needed two layers on. Now it has warmed up quite a lot. It's supposed to be 28 degrees or 27 degrees, something like that today. So it, uh, yeah, it's going to be warm. Good place to stop for lunch. Hmm. Let me put that on there a minute. Yes. Perfect. And I'm still right on track. That way is my way out of here. Yeah. Now the other week I was saying about mirrors. I don't have any sun in the mirror. Oh yeah, I do. There we go. So, put the... Uh, I flashed out on the camera. Yeah, it's bright, isn't it? If I uh, put my fingers up, like that, put the people that I'm trying to signal between my fingers, flash the light on my fingers, like so, flash the light on my hand, between that gap, that has to be pointing that mirror exactly at those people. And then you can just do one, two, three. Yeah works very very well the other thing with a compass is make sure you hang it around your neck <laughs> that is something you don't want to lose right I'm gonna not bore you with the rest of that I'm gonna enjoy the shade of this rather nice rock if that's not a really good sunshade I don't know what it is I do like this hollow but it's kind of weird the way it's come out like that geologically it's kind of odd I'm not sure why it's done that, but who knows? But 
for whatever reason it is, thank you very much, Mr. Rock. You make a very good sunshade. Right, just going to show you something about these big rocks. People look at these huge rocks, you can see it was made up with layers, eons and eons of silt and what have you. This used to be the bottom of a massive inland sea, all of this through here. Now, look at that rock. So there's little pebbles above it, literally pebbles. If you used to knock all those pebbles out, and that next rock down, this one, fell out. Look above it, another huge rock. And that basically is a pebble compared to this rock. So just disturbing that one rock. I can see it's broken. You can see where that is fractured out of there and it's actually going that way. So this huge rock that I'm stood next to, at some stage, is gonna fall down a hill. Hopefully that stage is not today. I really don't wanna be on the receiving end of that. Right, I need to head out that way actually. Before I attempt fate and the bloody thing does roll this way. Yeah. Right. Fortunately, once rocks lose momentum, they don't tend to roll uphill too much. That is a tidy sized rock though, isn't it? Great place to stop for something to eat though. Yeah, if that's not a good stopping spot, I don't know what is. Right, I need to head more this way-ish. So this way-ish I will go. Um, up and over, I guess. Doesn't matter where I go, there seems to be a lot of up. <laughs> Which is good. Keeps you busy, keeps the blood circulating. The pack I have with me today is probably only, I don't know, 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Maybe not even now, I've eaten half my lunch. Yeah. But, yeah. Keeps the blood circulating. All right, I need to go down there and up the other side. So, which way did the deer go? That way, got a bit. Definitely steeper than it looks, I can tell you. Remember I was saying about firewood earlier? This is the stuff you want. Of course, I could have done with that tree. Look at that. That nice grey wood like that. That one log there, that's probably a good part of a... On a full size fire. That's pretty much a good day's firewood. Right. Let me get back up. Yet more hill. Uh, forest should be made flatter. Oh. Or I should be younger, I'm not sure which. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of me getting younger anytime soon. So basically live with it. Oh. Adapt and flourish. But all along the top of here, there's these huge rocks. Which is why I am yabbering a bit. Because like I say, this is prime cat country. This is where they like to sit and hide. They get up in here, it's nice and high. They can look down over the valley, see what's down there, and uh, see if they can have an opportunity for an ambush. Cats are ambush predators. They could be a uh, cat watching me right now, and I would never know. It's uh, absolutely quite amazing how quiet they can be. I just spotted something large and black up through the trees over there. It makes a noise if it moves. Uh, it's not moving, so we'll take that. It's uh, You get a, a bear sitting down having a rest. You don't know. And you come along and disturb them. Oh look, ant pile. Never ever camp near an ant pile. Not a good plan. Not unless you want to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and have to move site very, very quickly. <laughs> You'd be surprised how little ants can turn a very nice camping trip. An absolute bloody nightmare. Okay, more boulders up there. Right, let me head up there and have a look. There's a reason why these things are called heart attack birds. See that grouse sitting up the tree there? <laughs> Literally, I almost stepped on them. Literally, they don't move until you're just about two feet off them. Yeah, I can hear you up there. You're enjoying it sitting up that tree, aren't you? There was a couple more of them flew out as well. So I'm thinking that's mum, because the other two went that way. Yeah, exactly. You know you're safe up there. I'm not going to bother you up there. 
Yeah. Right. Onwards and you guessed it, upwards. This is the deer know the good way to go, eh? <laughs> Problem is with deer, they got a four-wheel drive. They can get up and down these hills way easier than I can. There's a, there's a rock gully up through this lot somewhere. I can remember where it is. Let's try up over there. Trees look like they're thinning out a bit. Yep. God dear. <laughs> ah, there's that other big rock. See, all along here, massive rocks. Wake, wake, rise and show it. Good view. I can get up around there. These little branches on these trees. I call these barbed wire branches. Oh, yeah. Look at the size of these two rocks. <laughs> but you see these little holes like this. That's why I'm making noise as I'm coming up here. See that there? Perfect cat spot. In actual fact, I can actually smell cat. That hole there is used by cats. I can smell it. Now, that's what you've got to watch for. The other thing you've got to watch for is this lot is actually a lot looser than it looks. Yes. And that one perched up on the top there. Pretty much holding that up. <laughs> yes. That hole there, I can actually smell cat in there. So I won't hang around here too long in case said feline is uh, watching me, which is quite possible. Because you would never ever. Oh, there's a round squirrel. There he goes. Whee! Yeah. Made the net. They can get along the rocks way quicker than I can. <laughs> Amazing, you watch those little guys. Oh, another ant paw. See that? Ant paw. Team of ants. Like I say, never camp near there. That's quite the pile. Looks like a piece of rock broke off there recent too. It's got a clean, clean break on it. All right, we need to follow this ridge along. Whoop. Try not to fall down too many holes. If you suddenly get a really good picture of the sky, you know I fell down a hole. Nope, oh, slipped off another rock. Any trouble, this whole forest is absolutely soaked at the moment. And uh, everything you step on is slippery. So, I will head up through this way. Now this is the top of the big rock pile, isn't it? Yeah, right. So I do not want to be going over there. Well, I can see some big white cloud building in the back over the top of this one. That's the thing this time of the year. Look at this beautiful blue sky. And you think it's gonna be like that all day, but it's not. Wakey, well, wakey, rise and shine. Make some noise let anything up in here know I'm here. Generally speaking, I mean, people worry about bears and cats and all that kind of stuff, trust me. If there is a cat up in here and he wanted me for lunch, I wouldn't even know he's coming until he hit you. And then, uh, then it's an all out fight, which is <laughs> why I always have knives and things on lanyards. I don't want to be dropping that. That would not be a good time to be dropping a knife. Now, <sighs> there's two bands of rock here. This one I think has a reasonable view, so I will head over this way first. Something else came through here. Just in some crushed flowers. Something else came through here. I need to be heading off to my left. But, just gonna head round this way. See if I can get you guys a, a view. See, another hole. Not places you want to loiter too long, in case they're still around. Oh yes, I knew you could get a view along here somewhere. 
right I'll be really careful here because this is just literally a straight down pile of crap rock pile this is a terminal slope it would not take if you look at all that lot and you think each one of those rocks is probably anywhere from 100 to 200 maybe half a ton some of those rocks but it, uh, it does not take much to get them going and once you get one going like I showed you with that big rock just now you get one going you'll be surprised how quickly that can cascade into an absolute disaster and you don't want to be anywhere near that when that happens that mountain over there I happen to know that Ben and Larry have been up that one that's a bit of an interesting climb because you've got to cross this river first and then basically you go up that ridge follow that ridge all the way up up to the top and you can actually get right up on top of that rock pile I can see the cairn up on the top there's a small cairn up there actually must must be reasonably large for me to see it from here but it looks small yeah right I'm heading through the forest that way oh and here I am back at my bridge sun is shining really nice now warm it up I had to lose a layer but uh, now all I need to do is get out of here this is just one of those things that I build these every now and again because there's a pile of really slippery rocks down the bottom of there a big round slippery rock just like these green ones here and that's how you used to have to get across them but uh, now you can actually just walk across a really nice bridge and I can tell you now it's a lot easier to get across there without micro spikes on and an inch of ice <laughs> yes I nearly fell in there once that would not have been good right that'll do as a closing shot I'm gonna head back out of here and uh, head on to somewhere else